Welcome back. This morning we have yet another installment of Brandy's Book Club. So what does it take to truly be considered a man and how does a young boy learn? The answers to those questions will vary depending on who you ask. An author trio explores manhood and offers their perspectives in a new book, The Makings of a Man. This morning we welcome Jabari Price, Michael Holloman, and Gerard Rose. Thank you both. All, thank you all for being with us rather. Oh, thank you. Thank you First of all, and, and you know, I'll just throw these questions out here and you all can decide who's going to answer. But you know, you set out to deconstruct this image. Talk about what you all think the image is right now. Well, right now with society's image of a man, it really tends to be things that are materialistic and outward appearances like for instance the muscle bound man or, or the big tough guy. And it's not really that type of thing. It's actually more so issues of character that we try to focus on and show that they're important. Yeah. And uh, Jabari, I know that, you know, all of you are married fathers. Um, you know, how, how was it um, growing up when you look at the other young men around you and, and you were looking at what they were doing versus what you all set out to do? All of you are college educated. Um, you know, how, how did you compare growing up as a young man? Um. But well, we all felt it's kind of important to uh, first be a, a, a role model yeah. mm -hmm. and, you know, I guess set the stage for those that are coming behind us. You know, I look at, at my father and how he carried himself and um, basically I would kind of like to pass that down, you know, to, uh, to my children. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you all want readers to get from the book? Uh, what we're looking for them to receive is uh, instructions on how to become from, grow from being a boy to being a man. <clears throat> it's uh, not necessarily based on your age, it's just based on your character content. Yeah. We just want people to grow. We're not asking people to be perfect here. We far from that. We're not perfect ourselves. Yeah. We just want people to know that uh, there's room for growth always. Yeah, yeah. What did it take for you all to actually write this book? Well, it, first of all, it took a lot of planning. We sat down, we discussed mm -hmm. what we wanted the book to entail, and we actually sat down and wrote outlines for each chapter, even though we took specific chapters ourselves, you know, amongst the three of us, mm -hmm. we talked about what we wanted to see in each chapter. Once we planned it out, it probably took us about nine months from start to finish to actually complete the entire writing process mm -hmm. and do our own self-editing before we send it to a publisher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a little bit about the specifics in the book. You know, let, take me through the chapters. What is it that, you know, folks will, will see? Will they see a progression in, in the book or, you know, is it all instruction? Okay. That's a, <laughs> uh, uh, Mostly a, ma a manual type style. Okay. Uh, first, we introduce is what uh, society has pumped show a man to be. Mm. Uh, we go through that imagery. Uh, then from there, we deconstruct it by talking about character of a man. And we go through the different phases and different things that a man has to encompass in his character uh, to be a man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about that. What okay. does a man have to okay. encompass okay. In, his, in his character to be a man? Okay, uh, one of the things we discuss is our communication, mm -hmm. uh, learn, learning how to communicate. Another thing we discuss is our checks and balances, which is uh, basically uh, the people that you hang around with, which your mother always said was true. Yeah. The people that you hang out with are, are a direct reflection of yourself. Mm -hmm. And we talk about consistency in your character as well. Um, if you're not consistent in your character, people can't trust you. Yeah. Um, another thing we discuss was okay. planning, mm -hmm. planning, planning leadership, and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. Basically making sure that you have all of those issues uh, covered because those are things that are important to making sure that you're, you're a good man. You have to plan, you have to sell, just like we plan to do this book. Mm -hmm. You actually have to sit down and evaluate those things. And once you have that, that planning and you take in consideration leadership, things of that sort, those are issues that we definitely try to focus on to make it uh, our point across in the book. Now is it a book just for men? Uh, or can women, you know, a, a get, purchase and appreciate the book? Well, we, we write specifically targeting men because okay. we really feel if we can address and correct some of the issues in the male community that a lot of other things will fall in place. Mm -hmm. But really it's a book that anybody can pick up and get something from because it's issues of character. And, yeah. and as long as we're addressing character issues, those are not things that are just specific to men, yeah. but anyone can get something from it. Yeah. Absolutely. So can a woman, let's just say for the single mothers out there, mm -hmm. can a woman purchase the book and use it to train her son or use it to instruct her son? Absolutely. Yeah, we think okay. so. I mean, like, it, like uh, Gerard said, it's a book for, for everybody. And a woman can read it and take things from it and pass it to her son just like a man can. I mean, yeah. it's really, a, we think it's more of a people book. I mean, it's for men, but yeah. it's for people in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the, or what is, you all think, the biggest challenge right now facing African-American men? Really, I think it's the, it's the fact that it seems like so many things that in times past would have been say things that would have been frowned upon, they're so generally accepted now. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's almost the norm when you're doing wrong to a certain extent. And I think it's real hard for young men these days, particularly African American men, to actually go left and say, I'm going to do right regardless of what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. And I think if they can get past that, then they have a pretty good shot at becoming successful in society. Mm -hmm. And what would you all say are the challenges, the, the biggest challenge facing African American men? Uh, the biggest challenge, uh, <clears throat> as far as my perspective, being that I grew up in a single parent home, yeah. being raised by a mother, uh, that would be one of the biggest challenges. Uh, <clears throat> So many young men now are being told that if they've been raised in a single parent home by a mother, that they can't make it. Mm -hmm. um, that's not true. That's not true. Um, there are many sources and many places you can reach out and see men and learn about manhood, and that's why we decided to write a manual type style book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it that you know the community can do to rally around uh, African American men? You know, because as you all said, you know there obviously are challenges. You mm -hmm. know, we see the statistics um, of the high numbers of African American uh, young men in prison, the high numbers of them that are not college educated, the high numbers of them um, that have children out of wedlock, and different 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 things that some would argue um, uh, are affected affecting our society, but how do we go back and reclaim, um, you know, some of these the, some of these young men that are on paths of destruction? Um, personal accountability, um, from our perspective, um, <clears throat> if you know right, teach right. So many of us have, uh, so many older gentlemen, um, they know the right thing, they talk about doing the right thing, but they never reach out to the community to help those who are doing wrong, mm -hmm. to show them the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, I think also the fact that so many people think that being a leader is dependent upon your title. You can lead right where you are. If you're do doing the right thing and you see someone going, going astray, then you can bring them back in. Just It doesn't matter whether you have a title of pastor or a business owner. Mm -hmm. If you're a man and you know you're trying to do right, go ahead and help someone. Yeah. Yeah. And why do you all think the image has changed or, or it has gotten away, I guess, from, we'll say, what it used to be years ago? What it used to be. Well, I, <laughs> I really think that it's... It's probably due to the fact that over, probably over the period of time from, say, our parents' generation to now, it's almost gotten acceptable to kind of do certain things. Like we see a lot of these unwed mothers, single parent household, things of that sort, where the parent has never been married or things like that. And it used to be, like we said before, it's kind of like that was not looked upon as acceptable, but now it's gotten generally to the point over time slowly that it seems to be okay. And we need to try to, to get back to having some core foundation as far as family. And I think if we start with men, that a lot of the other things will trickle down and correct themselves. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, all for being with us. Everybody, the title of the book is The Makings of a Man. And please tell us, how can folks purchase the book? Okay, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you can visit our website, okay. uh, www.themakingsofaman.com. Uh, mm -hmm. You can purchase it there. Also, you can uh, visit our uh, Publishers website, which is uh, www.newdawningpublications.com. All right, thank you all again for being with us. Everybody, stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you.